No. No, that's not right. There's just too much history behind this gun to make it brief. The 1911. Even in silhouette, it is arguably the most recognizable handgun in the world. It has graced the hands of shooters for over a hundred years and has been made in hundreds of varieties and in numerous calibers by countless companies. It served as the primary sidearm of the American soldier for over 75 years and is still used by some branches of service today. I gave one to Colonel Renault in my comic Six Gun Mage, and I own three myself. Well, two and a half. I have to warn you, this might get a little more personal than you're used to with my videos. That's because of my three 1911s, this one has been witness to more history than I can even imagine. My grandfather carried it at his side through two theaters of the Second World War. It protected his life in the Ardennes Forest during the Battle of the Bulge, and stayed with him in Belgium when he stayed behind to rebuild when the other soldiers under his command were allowed to return home. It also belonged to my late father, who taught me to shoot with it once I showed an interest. I recall countless hours spent at the range, just me and my father in my early teens. When he died, it passed to me, and it was the first gun I brought to my local range, where I planked with it for hours. Then I was clued into how much it was worth. I know what some of you are saying. The 1911's meant to be shot. But I don't risk that gun much anymore. I just bring it out for special occasions. It's because of that that I built this. It's a 1911A1 that I built from parts and assembled and hand-fitted using nothing more than needle files in my living room. A task that I beg you, for the sake of your own sanity, do not attempt. So that brings me to my half-1911. This is a GSG-1911-22. It has an 80% parts interchangeability with real 1911s, but unlike the actual 1911, with its tilting barrel held in place by lugs and pivots, this 22 caliber trainer has a fixed barrel. But I'm getting ahead of myself. This isn't about me. It's about the 1911. Where did it come from? The 1911 is a single-action, semi-automatic, magazine-fed, recoil-operated pistol. In the early 1900s, the United States was looking for an automatic handgun to replace its standard service sidearm, which was a revolver. The gun that was to become the M1911 was designed by the visionary John Moses Browning. Though only one of dozens of weapons designed by Browning, it is arguably his most famous. It beat out Georg Luger's 45 caliber Luger and Savage's Model 1907 to be designated the M1911 and was introduced in time to be carried by soldiers into the First World War. Thereafter, several small changes were made, leading to the weapon being rechristened the 1911A1 around 1925. This revised version is what most people refer to as the 1911 today. The sidearm continued in service through the Second World War, Korea, and Vietnam. In the early 1980s, the Army decided it was time to replace the venerable design with a smaller caliber weapon capable of holding a larger number of rounds, and in 1985, the 1911 was officially replaced with the Beretta M9. Since then, while the Beretta M9 remains the American Army's primary sidearm, for a myriad of reasons, many units have since returned to the use of Browning's M1911. So what does this century-old design have even going for it? I mean, it's big, it's heavy, only carries seven or eight rounds, which is barely more than most revolvers. Let's start with caliber. This is a 22 long rifle cartridge. It's the most popular and widely used cartridge in the United States. This is a 9mm cartridge. It's the most popular handgun cartridge in the United States. It's also what's chambered in the Breda M9. Now, the 1911 doesn't use either of these. The 1911 chambers this. The 45 ACP, or Automatic Colt Pistol Cartridge, like the gun, this rimless round was designed by John Moses Browning and is nearly half an inch wide. It has what we like to call stopping power. If you hit someone with this round, the odds are that he will stop. With a round like this, the heaviness of the 1911 is good. It tames the 45's brisk recoil, and older isn't always a bad thing. 
There are over a hundred years worth of accessories and aftermarket modifications available for the 1911, making it still one of the most popular handguns in America. Then there's the reliability aspect. Now, don't get me wrong, I put to you that the 1911 in its original and intended form is a very reliable gun. This is where a hundred years of upgrades becomes a double-edged sword. You see, every one of these purported upgrades requires extensive hand fitting and takes the gun away from its original and reliable design. The 1911 is not an AR-15, it is not a modular gun. So all these changes tend to make the gun less reliable. With that in mind, is it time to retire this venerable workhorse? Is the 1911 a dinosaur in the world of mass-produced polymer handguns with easily swappable parts? Without question, no. My own words sort of fail me here, so I'm going to use someone else's. Of course the 1911 is an outdated design. It came from an era when weapons were designed to win fights, not to avoid product liability lawsuits. It came from an era where it was the norm to learn how your weapon operated and to practice that operation until it became second nature, not to design the piece to the lowest common denominator. It came from an era in which our country tried to supply its fighting men with the best tools possible, unlike today when our fighting men and women are issued hardware that was adopted because of international deal making or the fact that the factory is in some well-connected congressman's district. Yes, beyond any shadow of a doubt, the 1911 is an outdated design, and that's exactly what I love about it.